good morning everyone uh, after that uh, great dance uh, we're going to get into more learning and presentations so obviously not that exciting but we'll i'll try and do as much justice as i can uh, before i get started uh, there was an ask from few folks in terms of uh, some of the things that we've been doing in terms of webinars frequently for the techcom tool side so if you actually go ahead and search for, uh, all you have to search for webinar, Adobe, technical communication, RoboHelp, and possibly one of the things you'll get over here is something like this. Uh, some meet us techcom Adobe event. So this is the website. And if you happen to go over here, you will see we've been doing frequently a lot of webinars uh, lately around RoboHelp, uh, Collaborate Using Git, Frameless Layout. So we've been doing frequently a lot of webinars. Uh, every month, in fact, we are trying to do a webinar. Uh, we just finished our webinars for this month. Uh, there's only one webinar remaining. It's a shorter month in terms of uh, because of Christmas holidays, but the next month will be starting in January. Uh, that's for that one and uh, let's get started oh. <coughs> that's okay i actually gave a presentation yesterday also not okay required. you want me to no no that's okay I'll, I'll carry on. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Uh, it actually feels very odd when somebody is introducing you to an audience. It feel kind of very, very okay. So I've kind of asked him to skip the introduction part of it. Uh, we'll mostly be talking about how do you create uh, rich and engaging experiences for your end users. And we'll specifically focus on RoboHelp 2019 release for that one. And we'll talk about the frameless layout. Uh, so my name is Amitot Singh. I'm a senior product manager with uh, with Adobe. Uh, that's my email address. So if in case anyone wants to reach me out uh, after this or even later, uh, you can directly reach me out. Uh, there's this term customer experience. Have all of us heard of it? Awesome. What does it mean? Anyone? Okay, so if anybody sees a content, how does it look? More inputs? Look and feel, how do we grab the attention? Anyone else? Usability aspects, what else? Relevance of the content, what else? Presentation of the content, anyone else? How frequently? Okay, so if I summarize some of the thoughts that we have got here is how frequently it is used, the presentation of the content, uh, uh, the relevance of the content, uh, the look and feel, the usability aspects of it. So there are a lot of these factors that together combine the customer experience. Actually, customer experience is much more than that because these days, if you talk about a customer experience, and I was looking at this picture, ideally from a customer experience, we would want a customer experience to be like this, where it's he's driving down lane, uh, where everything is great, right? But that's not always the case. Uh, customer experience starts from the time not when the customer has purchased the product but it starts at the time when the customer starts thinking about that product in fact most surveys uh, now say that the initial experience that the customer has has a direct correlation with whether the customer actually ends up using that service or the product or a mix of both and uh, it's more prevalent now that if let's say somebody is trying to book uh, a ticket from makemytrip.com and they see a pop-up error saying, hey, uh, this page is not uh, responding properly, you will immediately close it. That's your customer experience gone. So that never happens. That, that they cannot afford to. Similarly, if somebody is buying a Dell 
a PC or a laptop, in my case I'm using a Dell laptop, and they go and try and research about it, the customer experience starts right from there, right? Uh, the documentation being a very, very critical part of it. And most of us work in a B2B setups, uh, our organizations are B2B in nature, and there the relevance of technical documentation is very, very heavy. Uh, this is just a small engram viewer of how the customer experience as a search term has been going up. And if you see before 1980, it was pretty much non-existent in this world. So nobody used to talk about customer experience. It's probably the likes of Amazon, which actually came up and started talking about customer experience that now it's on an ever increasing path of customer experience and you keep searching and you will find more and more content around it. That brings me to something which is more relevant for us, which is how do we as technical writers, documentation managers, information architects, developers, create a rich and engaging experience for our audience? What is our audience looking for from us when we actually give that technical content out? Anyone wants to go first at it? Okay. Okay, ease of use should be described of the product, the service should be described, what else? So now we develop the content and we give it out to the customer. Now we have been on the other side of it as well, where as a customer we consume content, whether it's a Make My Trip, Amazon, or we are looking at a brochure of a product. Uh, recently we went to buy a fridge for my home and we were looking at the documentation of the product to see, okay, these features, these, right? So we are also the consumers in some way. What are the things that you think our audience is looking for from our content, uh, from our work professional when we are generating that content? How do we get started? Okay, what else? The navigation of the application. From an experience, what are they looking from an experience in that documentation? Okay, so the overall structure of how it is and uh, being able to uh, kind of navigate through the whole process and it should be simple for our users, okay? What else? Right, so uh, easy, easy findability, navigability and being able to search for the right content is very, very important, okay? Anyone else? from this side. Okay. All of us have heard of this term HTML. Show of hands. Okay. Everyone has heard of this term HTML. Again, this is not a new term. It has been in existence starting 1975 when HTML came, HTML5, responsive HTML5. These days, People want to access our content, the technical documentation, or be it uh, uh, any of the content across various form factors, which is a given thing, right? So for example, uh, right now we just did a survey on menti.com and we all did from a mobile, right? Uh, 10 years back probably, or 15 years back, we'd be doing it on our desktops, right? Which we never used to have at conferences or tablets. I saw some folks using tablet as well. So which means, so if we tie up customer experience, technical documentation and the new technology trends that are emerging, it is becoming even more important for us to make sure that when we give the final output to our customer and encompasses all these three areas, which is it has to be rich in customer experience, it has to be latest in technology, otherwise my customers can't use it across various form factors. The third part is obviously around uh, the technical content and all the things we described about usability, findability, look and feel and everything. I know as technical writers, how the documentation look was never one of our KRAs or a KPI at the earlier time frame, right? But now our managers do ask us about that, right? Uh, in fact, uh, I just met somebody in the morning, he had about two years of experience in technical writing and he came and said, 
what are the other things I should start uh, doing? He was authoring in Word and he was starting to use XML data. I said, do do a small course on HTML, CSS, because these days that comes sometimes handy. Uh, when uh, although you that's not your KRA or KPIA, right? You still be tagged on how creative you are when you write your technical content. But that extra edge may just come from these small certifications around data, HTML, CSS, knowing a bit of JavaScript, because then you are differentiated from everyone else. So clearly, responsive HTML5 has taken uh, something because some of the aspects we just described are all covered with the responsive HTML5 layout. Uh, uh, anyone here have been using RoboHelp in the past? Okay, most of you, awesome. So uh, if you've used RoboHelp in the past, these terms may be very familiar to you, the Indigo and the Azure layout, right? Uh, why the name's Indigo Azure? That's the history. Uh, obviously, it's on the color of the layout that we were using. That's why the reason for these particular layout name. Familiar look and feel. Uh, basically, what happens here is you have the main page, the main project, the breadcrumbs here for easy navigability, something that we talked about a search for easy findability, a table of contents for a structure to come correctly, making sure it works seamlessly across various form factors. So from a customer experience standpoint, that's not a problem. Then the other part about the look and feel, so you've taken care of the usability because it's usable across various form factors. You've taken care of the searchability, the navigability, the content is there and I'm assuming content wise, the relevance of the content is obviously being taken care of as, as a job, uh, job requires us to do that, right? That's our KPIA on a day to day basis. The look and feel, obviously it's an HTML CSS, so you can change whatever you want in it to make it look like. You can have a logo change here. You can have the look and feel change here. You can add new buttons, controls, whatever is required to make it look good for you, right? That's the end goal. Now, when we released the new RoboHelp Reimagine 2019, which was released, anyone has tried here RoboHelp Reimagine 2019? Uh, no one. Uh, RoboHelp 2017? Okay, few of you. So if you have not, uh, you've been an earlier user of RoboHelp, irrespective of the tool that you're using now, I would highly recommend you to try, download a new RoboHelp 2019 and try it out. And give us your feedback. Uh, may not be from a usage perspective or from a day-to-day -day use, but would be good to hear feedback from uh, RoboHelp users to figure out, are we going in the right direction? Because we have been getting some good positive feedback now about RoboHelp 2019 Reimagine. And as part of that, what we have done is we have introduced a new frameless layout. Now the question is, what is a frameless layout? What does it helps us? Keep these pictures in your mind. These are the pictures of responsive HTML5 layout, Indigo Azure. Okay. You've taken a snapshot in your mind of these pictures. Okay. Does this look better than that one? How many agree? All right, all of you, awesome. Looks better. That's the experience on mobile device for that particular web page. The filters you can see immediately are in a very different way, right? That's the way you search it in Amazon now. The index, the glossary, there's a footer option over here. Uh, that's how the web looks. You have the filters over here. It's a plain, simple looking. So obviously it's the magic of CSS or your design team now that comes into picture to make it look very beautiful, right? Uh, you probably would stop at a particular point and give it to your design team for the final uh, template or the master page of the CSS to use. Why in the 2019 reimagined RoboHelp release did we introduce the frameless output and there are a couple of reasons for it clearly. The first one is it's a unique URL for each page. For example, if I'm in about module one, it's a unique URL that comes all the way there. So you can see at the end, it's about module one dot HTM. What? 
Okay. Ooh. This one is truncated. This one is coming right. Okay. Let me actually make it this. So it's a unique URL for each page. Second thing is there are no frame sets or iframes. You've heard of this term iframe being used uh, quite a bit in HTML. Any of you have heard of that term? Okay, some of you. It's a technical term. Basically what you do is you create three frames in within a page and then that's how you render it. If it is a frameless, what it does is uh, it doesn't have any frame sets or iframes. So it becomes very, very Google search and SEO friendly. Suddenly what happens is your page starts ranking higher. Otherwise you'll have to do a lot of effort onto it. I'm not saying you don't have to do SEO metadata keywords all that has to be done that's given just that it further helps you have separate home page topic pages gdpr compliance uh, web help responsive html5 what do we mean by web help responsive html5 web help was just plain html5 responsive is what you can see on your mobile device as well and then customized footer right so there were some key advantages of using the frameless output that we have come with the feedback that we have received more about the frameless output is as soon as a customer sees the frameless output with the new robot 2019 reimagined, they immediately want to try it out because it gives them those limitless possibilities, right? Uh, in terms of some of the challenges we talked about, some of the things we would want our customer to experience. Things such as, uh, first of all, the thing which is given is mobile, desktop, tablet, tech. The second thing is, having a great looking experience or a framework on which you can build it, tech. CSS, yes, you will either you have some knowledge or you work with your design team to get that CSS and just upload that CSS. Fourth thing, navigability search and the bigger point is we've introduced a new search engine and I'll just show it to you with a small demo. So the usability becomes better, navigability becomes better and you're using something which is similar to your corporate platform. So if you look at your corporate platform, you will find sites like this in your corporate platform. So your look and feel starts becoming more corporate uh, with your other corporate and marketing content, right? So you still start seeing that synergies between the two. Let's get to the demo phase. So for most of you have not seen uh, RoboHelp Reimagine, what I'm gonna do is, uh, and I think I have about 15, 20 minutes more, so. I'm going to launch Robo 2019 and I'm going to launch Robo 2017. So this is the new Robo Help reimagined or the 2019 interface, right? Uh, very, very different look and feel and Robo 2017 will take some time to load, uh, obviously because we have redone the whole architecture, we've rewritten the whole thing. It is using a full HTML engine inside it, so it's much, much better and faster. Uh, till the time 2017 loads, we'll move ahead. Now I'm loading up a project onto it. Can you see the speed at which it opened? The first thing you'll notice, there are no workspaces, no menu bars, no toolbars, no pods, nothing is there, right? In all the technical writing tools that you currently use, do you find them? Pods, toolbars, dialog box, messages, yes? All that is not here, sorry about that. But you're getting a new modern look and feel, which is easy. It is powerful as your any other tool. So the power has not been taken up, just the user experience has been made better so it looks good. Which means everything is right over here and we've put a panel over here on the right side. By the way, now Robo 2017 is launched. Let me open the Travel the Worlds. Uh, so your authoring screen is all over here. You've got your uh, lists, ability to add tables, images, videos, multimedia and support for online video, link, bookmarks, variables, snippets, fields, insert. Okay, it's opening. Wow. 
this now looks quite, quite cumbersome in terms of what we are seeing in the new UI, right? You'll all agree? This versus this, okay. Symbols, special characters, and a lot of other things, right? If I want to make this different, I just need to go over here, change it to heading one, and that's it. You're done. For preview, click here and you have the preview. Source code right over here. Since it's been rewritten, we have been able to put in a lot of performance into this new platform. Uh, so that's why I'm suggesting everyone to try it out and share your feedback with us. Uh, one of the major things about RoboHelp is now we are using fully compliant XHTML, which is a W3C open standard. We are not making any custom schemas or anything in it. So which means it's a pure HTML that you can take ahead and even reuse it and it's ready for even 10 years, 15 years down the line. Have any of you heard of HDATA? HTML data, lightweight data. So HDATA is a W3C open standard that has come up. It has an HTML version of it. So lightweight data, XML data you might have heard of. Similarly, there is HDATA. We are using that also in terms of the base for the whole platform, which means it's a W3C standard. So you, you can take your content, use it anywhere else, and it kind of is more open source in the nature. So from moving from one tool to another or moving from one platform to another or for even later on for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the line, if you want to look at the uh, being able, it's not a custom proprietary format that you're using. So that's the advantage of it. All right, coming now to the more interesting part, which is around the output. So earlier we used to have, uh, and as you can see, it's a very, very simple UI, uh, similar to the way you work on a Gmail or a Google Docs, where your controls are on the top, progressively left to right is where it all opens up, the content layout, everything is here. I think this is a common format that might be very, very familiar to the RoboHelp users, which is the Azure Blue. The whole power of the platform is still there. So which means if let's say header, you want to go ahead, change it to red, done. And it does that, right? It's a real time feedback, right? You don't have to preview or anything. It's all a real time feedback that's right over here. Title font color you want to change to blue, go ahead, do that. Uh, font name, logo you want to change, width you want to change, header search box. Everything as part of the overall skin can be customized in this. Everything. Layout, search boxes, layout. I don't want to show TOC. I don't want to show index. I don't want to show glossary. Right? Now, switching gears to the new one, which is the frameless layout, the one that we just saw. Now, this is the new frameless layout. One thing you can immediately see, there are two views right over here, which is a mobile view and a desktop view. So you can see how your output is looking. Now, you can see there is this switch button here, which you can configure to say responsive or non-responsive. So web help and responsive HTML5 have been combined. So you're using the best technology. So you can easily switch between the two. You can give an option to generate a GDPR compliance where you get that message as soon as the website opens. It says, please accept cookies and stuff like that, right? You can change the theme color, the search text highlight, the layouts. Everything is configurable right away. I'm going to generate a responsive. This is the home page that you see. Can you see this option of the footer content? So typically what happens is your website or your corporate site will have a footer that you would want to have it. So that will typically be an HTML file. You can go ahead and simply use that footer. Let me open that over here to show you what it is. In this case, it's a very simple, plain simple that we've done, but it can be as complex as you want. Just go ahead and select the homepage footer. Uh, these are the TOC images. Uh, basically what you're seeing over here, these are the TOC images. These are called tiles. Uh, which means you can have your own tiles somewhere you would want a folder hierarchy navigation so you can add that and these can be configured or you can not have them and just have text. 
that option is there with you when you come to the topic page uh, what suddenly happens over here is uh, you have the index pane the same functionality as earlier glossary again an option to do the footer content right over here uh, coming further ahead you have the topic page buttons that you want to do you'll see a new option of download PDF now what this means is you would want sometimes what happens is when you are part uh, when you have given your documentation you would still want to give a download button to use it to download a PDF file now that comes all in built all you have to do over here is uh, and I'll show you it in the topic page uh, this is the mini TOC or the TOC levels that come any user assets you want to add your own CSS you can add when you come to the home page you pretty much can change anything and everything in this for example let me go ahead and change the logo this is the logo that I want to change and can you see the finer details in terms of the control you have on it you need not be a CSS expert to work on the new frameless layout uh, most of this can be done by any technical writer and they can configure this whole thing on their own and get ready and show it to their managers or into their uh, team as a feedback and then that can further be improved. You can go ahead and change it to, uh, in this case this won't work but let's say in the top section I have this title and you can see as soon as it's highlighted it comes in red. I want to make it bold or italic. Uh, change the alignment of it to be center aligned uh, probably uh, change the border to have some styles around it a solid border color need not be black otherwise I can't see it let me make it green done can you see that happening it's all real time that's happening so you can pretty much have a full control over the frameless layout where you can change anything and everything in it Coming to the logo, simply go to background. You have the option of changing the image path. This is the logo.png I am currently using. Go to assets, images. Uh, let me add this as the logo now. Search box configurability. You can configure everything in the search box, how it looks. Uh, the icon of it uh, can be changed as well everything can be changed right from here similar configurability you have for the topic page as well uh, where you can change anything and everything in the topic page as well but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this and generate an output so I've already configured the frameless output uh, it's all done content is there table of contents index I'm gonna say use this glossary tooltip based glossary style no condition expression dynamic content filters need to be there uh, let me save this layout I'm gonna select orange and there was an option of PDF to download so you can configure your PDF right over here so you can select which PDF you want to download skin home page content now what is this at times what happens is you would want your home page to come and then you would want some FAQs to come and some things like that you want to come right many often now you can do that very easily simply add and I've added a home page content now we're gonna see the final output to see how it is because the magic is in when you've actually created the whole output so you save it and let's generate the output. Any questions anyone has? Yeah. Yes. So all these are options uh, if you actually go here the output is generated so there was a toast message uh, show in explorer uh, so this is the output I'll just show you there is a settings file that you can share it in your organization so that's definitely possible let's do a quick preview of it. first thing that comes is the GDPR compliance uh, I'm gonna just do later 
Now, obviously this looks very heavy in terms of because I'm using a standard sample, but some of the things changes that I made start reflecting. The search results are more better and I'll show you the search results later. Uh, in case you don't wanna have all these stuff, you can remove it. But as I said, I'd added a uh, basic stuff around frequently viewed questions, frequently asked, because typically in any search that we have, we have those frequently asked questions, some of the things we want to share, some videos we want to share, featured videos, etc., etc. That can be an HTML topic, and then there is the footer. And then uh, the video is unavailable. Let's see if this video is available. Right? You can do a full screen right from here. So it actually plays and renders. This is the functionality of HTML not something that trouble is in inkling. Let's look at the search. So one thing you can see that as I start typing like a Google kind of experience and that's one of the things you further improved this time and the one of the things you talked about searchability, findability, we have really improved the search algorithm to be more relevant to have and find you some of the commonly used terms as well as as you start typing, you'll start getting the results. For example, I want to know about uh, tables. So it starts suggesting me something. Let's say I make a mistake. I make it table. Typically what will happen, it will not give me any option, but there's a fuzzy logic search in it, which means it finds the closest match for you, similar to the way Google does and you say table and you have the search results that come over here. Now, one thing you will notice in this is I'm actually being able to find the word and share the context in which this is happening. I'm just not showing you the topic. If you click this topic, you will actually be able to highlight and see where all table comes through the whole topic. If you don't want to highlight, you can remove it, but that option is now there with you. The whole index is right over here. Contents are over here. If you remember, we had added a PDF download option over here. If I go to the RoboHelp pre-imagined homepage, It opens this. If you have folders within folders or topics within topics, you will be able to go further in to the next level and then open it. And then you have the topic page. So what we have tried to do is typically in the Indigo Azure layout, you used to have just the main page. You didn't used to have an option to configure a home page, then topic pages, add your customization stuff, add your home page. So all that options have now been enabled with the frameless output. Any questions anyone have? Yeah. Off? Sorry, I didn't. Down. Okay, so you have an option of download as a PDF. Yes. Is it for the whole content or for each HTML topic you have an option to? So right it? now it is at an overall level where you have it, but that can also be configured at a topic level. But that, that will require some customization because assuming you have thousands of pages, what you would need to do is, oh, by the way, Uh, topic page. Can you see this option of topic page buttons being there? Now you can add your topic page button and on this particular download PDF, I've given that control, but if you want to be able to download a PDF for that particular PDF, you have to use some engine to generate that PDF and be able to download. 
as long as you can add an on click javascript event for it which generates the pdf and do it using any library that you want you can have your own per page pdfs we have that given, is customizable right this is so customizable you can add whatever you want so right now if you look at this and if i open a notepad plus plus It has a specific action that we've associated here, but you can configure it and add it whatever you want. So that customization is in the hands of the customer or in the hands of technical writer where you can configure it. Okay. One thing before I conclude is we talk about responsive HTML5 layouts, right? Have you heard about your platform being responsible or your authoring tool being responsible? Responsive? Have you heard of that term? So one of the key things that we've added along with this is the platform in itself is responsive. So as you kind of, and as it happens in every demo, it is not behaving responsive, but you can actually even provide it in the future. You want to launch it on a tablet or a mobile, that functionality is there because the whole platform is responsive because internally this is all hosted on an HTML engine. Uh, so what that enables is the platform is itself responsive. So you have the ability in the future to do a lot of more things and that's one of the reasons why I've been able to develop so fast and release frequent patches and updates. Uh, so that you can immediately do a quick generate and see it. So there's an option to do a quick generate. So what you can do is you can immediately do a quick generate and keep working and have the page where you have the output. So that option is now always there. So, and if you already generated, you just click here to see the output. So that functionality is also there. Okay. Uh, that's from my side. Uh, briefly, I would want to ask everyone to, as Paresh was talking about the salary survey, we have a Adobe TechCom survey. Uh, in fact, he was talking about increasing the number of users who give that service. So last year we had about 2200 users who gave that survey, Techcom survey is one of the largest surveys of technical communication industry. Uh, last year we had 2200 respondents as part of it and that was across the world. So if 650 respondents are responding to an Indian survey, it's, I think it's a very good number. Uh, uh, we have a one survey which will close in about two weeks time. This is the link for it. I know it's a very long link, but what you can do is you can just search for Adobe Technical Communication Survey 2020 and the third link is that one. Click on this link and fill up the survey. It takes about seven to eight minutes. The survey findings, there'll be a webinar. So all the details will be shared. This will help you in terms of what's the next things that are happening in the technical writing industry so that you guys can get prepared and probably an input for the STC and the other bodies to look at which are the other trainings that can be taken up as well. Yes, there are a few prizes as well associated with it. So that's a lucky draw that happens and you can get the outputs. Uh, that's all I had from me. Uh, in uh, Any quick questions before we end for the this session? Okay, if there are further questions, please feel free to come by the booth and we'll be happy to answer them. And thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much Amitoj. A big round of applause to Amitoj for the interesting session.